Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and today I'm going to teach you how to transfer an image onto these glass tumblers. So these tumblers are specifically made for a process called sublimation. So you'll want to look for blanks that have that specific coating to accept sublimated images. So I'm going to show you the design process and application and the final result. So I will link everything I'm using in today's video in the video description, and we will walk through everything you need to know to get started. This first one I will be transferring using the PYD Tumblr Press, and then the second one I will be using my Cricut Mug Press. So I just wanted to kind of compare the two presses. All right, we're going to use the same design, so let's get started. We'll need our computer or device, and I'm using Silhouette Studio, the free version. We will be using Silhouette Studio and we are not using a cutting machine for this project at all. So if you have a computer, you can download Silhouette Studio even if you don't have a Silhouette machine. So you'll head over to silhouetteamerica.com slash software and I will put all of the links in the video description. And there's this big button here and you can click download and that will download the free software that we're using. I already have that downloaded to my computer, so I will open that up. So this here is the free version. I do have the upgraded version, but we're looking at the free version here. And this is all you'll need for this project. So you do not need to pay for the software at all. For this project, I'm using the sublimation glass cans from PYD Life. So these are the 18 ounce and on the side of the box, it actually shows you the printing size. So it says, the four and a half inch height by the 9.4 inch width. And then it tells you the pressing instructions as well. So for the tumbler press, we're pressing at 356 degrees for two minutes. And then if you have an oven, they also tell you those instructions as well. So in Silhouette Studio, we need to create a template. So we are going to select this drawing tool over here and we're going to choose the first one, the rectangle, and we're going to roughly draw out our dimensions. Once you have a good rough drawing, we can hone in on the exact dimensions by coming up to the top. And we know that we need 9.4 inches wide by 4.5 inches tall. So now that our dimensions are laid out, I'm going to add a little bit of a stroke to this design. So right now this line is zero points. So when I click print, nothing would actually print. So if I want to be able to see that, I can toggle up here on the top toolbar to add like 0.5 of a point, which will give me a nice thin line, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And I want it to be a little lighter. I'm going to choose gray, but you can use any color that you want. Just know that you'll want to cut away this entire line before transferring it onto your tumbler. Now that our design template is here, I'm going to add another rectangle at the bottom and I want this one to be the same width, so 9.4, and I want it to be 0 0.1035 inches tall. And the reason I want it to be that height is because if we look at the tumbler, the pink portion of the bottom of the tumbler, it comes up about that far, so I just want to place my design above that area. And you can use whatever dimensions you feel comfortable with, but I just wanted about a little over an inch at the bottom so that my design sat about here. We will delete this rectangle before we move on, but that's just a guide for placing our design. The next thing I want to do is add a design. So previous to being a Cricut user, I was a Silhouette user, so I have tons of designs in my library. But if you are unfamiliar with Silhouette Store and their library, you can actually click on the store icon and it will open up your internet browser and you can search for any design you wanted. So I wanted something with florals. So I searched for florals and then I sorted by trending. You can also do newest to oldest, whatever you want. And then I chose some designs that I liked. There was a cute book one that we're going to use, but if there's anything that you wanna search for, you can buy those images and then use them. If you are selling your products, you can even buy a commercial image license so that's an option so the image i chose was grow your mind so i'm going to click on that image and i just selected both parts of my image and i'm going to scale them to fit my tumbler so 
So I want my design to be in the middle of my cup, which we will use the align tools in just a second. But we'll zoom in. And like the red line here and the red line that was around our rectangle, the red line won't actually print, but if it's throwing you off and you want to change it, you can click up at the top and choose this no line so you can get a good idea of what your image will look like. I want my design to be a little thicker, so I'm actually going to change my line to be, I'm gonna do my whole image to be this pink color. So let's change the line to pink and then the fill to pink. And then I want my outline to be a little thicker to kind of increase the boldness of my design. So I'm going to click on the point size and I don't want it to be too thick where I lose portions of my image. So, oh, doing too much, too fast. So I think I'm gonna go back down to 0.25. So just a little bit more bold. And then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Right now there's two images on here. So this one came in separately from this one. So I'm going to select both of them and right click. So on my keypad, on my trackpad, I'm using two fingers to click and that will bring up this window and I'm going to group those together so that they move together. My image is 3.7 inches wide right now, which is pretty large for the tumbler. So when you're looking at the tumbler, you really can only see, let's see if we move my computer out of the way here. So you can see that we really only see three inches. It wraps around, but the biggest I would say that you want to go is probably about this wide, which curved around is probably like 3.25. Let me get a better measuring device to show you. I'm using my 143 scraper here to hold my glass. So we'll just place it here. And if we take our tape measure, you can see that I can see about four inches with it curved around. So that's probably the biggest I would go with my design if it's just a singular image. And if you wanna go smaller, you can just play around with your dimension. So 3.75 might be okay. So let's try that. And then we'll center it up in Silhouette Studio. So back on Silhouette Studio, I'm going to highlight everything and use my align tools here. So up at the top, there's this align option here. And then for your image, you can place this wherever you want. So I kind of want it to be centered between these, this line and this line, because I don't want it in that darker pink area. So this actually looks good to me, but if I change my mind when I place it on my tumbler, I can also adjust it with just moving the paper around. So if you want it to be dropped down and actually centered, whatever you think looks good, that works for you. Now, before we print it, we have one last step. We need to mirror this image. To mirror your image, you're going to come up to the object panel here, choose mirror, and we're going to flip horizontally. Perfect, just like that. Now we don't need this box anymore, so if we printed it, it's not going to show up since it is zero points, but if you want to delete it just for good measure, you can absolutely delete it. So here's what we have. We have a sheet of paper with our template and our image. You don't necessarily need the template. You can just cut this with a square around it and place it. But I do find that the wrap allows me to better position my image. So I'm going to leave it and then we're going to print the design. Make sure that your paper matches the same size as the paper you're using. So if it does not, you'll come over to this page set up here and you want to make sure that your media size is set to whatever you're printing on. So I'm using letter size paper, which is correct, and my orientation is set to landscape. All right, now let's print this image. So I'm going to come up to the top, file, print. Just to confirm your settings are correct, I'm using a wide format Epson printer with sublimation ink, and my page size is set up to that letter size, eight and a half by 11, and it is set to landscape, which is correct. You'll also see the print border around to make sure that your orientation is correct. Then we'll click print. I have my printer that I want it to print from. And then I have my media and quality tab. I want it to print from my rear tray. 
and I always use the settings photo map paper and I scroll this to best. So it normally is on normal and I move it over to best. Before I hit print, I'll load in my paper and today I'm using the PYD Life Sublimation Paper. If you followed along for a while, you know that I'm not a huge subscriber on sublimation paper. I actually think that regular copy paper works just as great. So I am trying this out today, but if you want to try copy paper, I've had very similar results. If anything, sublimation paper is a little more crisp, but honestly, my eyes are not good enough to see the difference. So we'll be using this today. I don't necessarily think you need a sublimation paper. You just need sublimation ink. Here's the print. If you need help on how to print, I have a full tutorial on setting up a printer with sublimation ink. Again, this is not normal, regular printer ink. This is sublimation ink. And we are going to trim this down. So like I mentioned, we don't want those lines to be on our tumbler. So I'm actually going to overcut just a little bit. So I'm lining up my gray line with the outside ruler to ensure that I'm really cutting off the line because I don't want that to accidentally transfer to my project. So this template will be a little bit smaller and won't match up exactly with my tumbler size, but that's okay because we only have one design, not a full wrap. All right, so I've ensured that I've cut off all of my edges. Using my scraper again, we're going to place our design so we can take off our lid and the straw. And we'll want to use heat resistant tape for this portion. So here's my design trimmed down. I definitely need a new paper trimmer, but we're going to place it onto the cup. So the ombre is really dark up until like here. So I want my design to kind of start there. So if I match up my template, that's why we added that little bit of gap at the bottom so that our ombre didn't interfere. So if I line the template up to the straight portion of my cup, so I'm just going to wrap it around the straightest part. And that looks a little low, so let's bring it up just a little bit higher. I think I'm gonna put it there. So I'm going to start by pushing one side down. So I have my tape on one side. And then as tight as I can pull this, I'm pulling it to the other side so that it's nice and straight. And like I mentioned, we did trim off a lot of our template, but even if you don't trim off the template, it doesn't match all the way together. So if you're doing a full wrap, you will need to make your dimensions a little bit bigger than what they recommend. But for this beginner project, we are just going to use a well, singular image, so it doesn't matter if it wraps all the way around. So I'm not sure if you can see, but you can kind of see your image through it. And if you look this way, you can also see your image on the back or inside rather, and it looks like the image starts right above the end of the ombre. So I think that looks good. So for the first project, I'm going to use the PYD Life Tumbler Press. And to set it, there's a set button and you can set your temperature. We're doing the 356 degrees for 120 seconds. And it comes with all the instructions on how to set it. Super intuitive, really easy to set up. and heats up so quickly. So I just turned it on and it's already at 140 degrees. So this heats up super quickly. I'm using the larger size press right now, but you can actually unscrew this and swap it out for different sizes, which is pretty neat. I like using Cricut's Easy Press mats to place my designs when they come out of the press. So these cups are super hot and you wanna make sure that you have a place that is heat resistant and safe for you to put it. Do not put it on a self-healing mat because that will warp. I'll place it here and then put it on like a wooden surface or a heat resistant counter so that it doesn't melt or warp any of my surfaces. So the press doesn't beep or anything when it's ready, but if you look at your time and temperature, everything looks correct. So I'm going to place my cup in the press. So I'm using an oven mitt, a pit mitt. I'll link this on Amazon. And then I want my design to be face down so that it is evenly heated. So I'm gonna slide that in there with the seam facing me. And then I'm going to close this down. And once I close it down, the timer will automatically start counting down for two minutes since I set it to 120 seconds.
It'll beep when it's done. And then you'll want to pull it open. Kind of use a lot of force. Using my gloved hand, I'm going to pull this out because this will be super hot. And then you'll place it on a heat resistant surface to let it cool down. While the other tumbler was cooling off, I grabbed my Cricut mug press, which is this one here. I've done a setup unboxing video on this. And I thought I would try to see if these glass cans fit in here. And they fit, but unfortunately, when you close them in, they are not tight enough to press. So I did a quick Google search and there are sellers, including PYD Life, that sells like a rubber sleeve that can be placed around this to make it a little tighter and you can press with that on it. So unfortunately, I won't be able to make that video today because I don't have those sleeves. So this just wouldn't get enough pressure to get a good transfer. So this will be another video, but I will show you the final product from the first press. So I let this cool down completely. You can see that I can handle it and touch it. So definitely let it cool down before attempting to remove the tape and the paper. I'm just going to peel off the tape. And here is the reveal of the image. You can see that the image didn't bleed through at all, which I'm super impressed with because I didn't even think about this until right now, but normally in my Cricut mug press, I would wrap butcher paper around to prevent blowout and there was no blowout. So that is a benefit of the sublimation specific paper because there was no ink that went through to the other side. And there still is a lot of ink on the sheet, but it transferred beautifully. So let's peel this off and you can see the final design. I think this is a good size where you can see the whole image when you're looking at the front and you don't lose the image from it wrapping too much. And I like the placement. You can see that it's a little bit higher than the ombre. So definitely a good transfer really even, no blotchiness. I'm really excited with how that turned out. So let's put this down here. And again, it has the cap and the straw that comes with it. So I'll put this right here so you can see that while I show you some of the other cups that I got too. So in addition to the colored ombre cups, like that one, there also are these clear glass cans, which I do think would look great with sublimation, but I feel like white vinyl would pop even more. So I'm debating if I want to use this with a vinyl project or do sublimation, because I do feel like these, I do feel like the frosted ones transfer or will transfer better than the clear glass because sublimation ink, the way you should think about it, it's like almost a watercolor. So there's a, a level of translucency. So if I transferred a pink image, you can see through that image where it looks a little bit more opaque on this frosted glass. But they do have the clear glass option and they also have the full frosted glass option, which I think would be great for sublimation, even more so than the clear. So if you're looking for some options, these two are really fun. And I actually like the colored one more than I thought because I do feel like doing the same color um, ink as the ombre is a really fun look. So here is that look and then we can put the straw in it so you can see how cute it is. I love how that turned out. So I will link to the paper, the ink, how to convert a printer, all of that good stuff in the video description. So if you don't know how to get to the video description, you can click on this little drop down here and you can see the video description and all of the fun things I used in today's video. So if you have questions, comments, leave them below and I will get back to you. I also have a Facebook group that's dedicated to Cricut Crafts, but we talk a lot about Glowforge and sublimation in there too. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. In terms of washing, I do wash my sublimation products in the dishwasher. Obviously this one has not been washed yet, 
So I will leave an update in the comments. I'll continue to use this and wash this. I wash everything but the wooden lid in the dishwasher. So I wash the glass straw and the cup in the dishwasher, but I do not wash the lids. I hand wash these. So I will report back an update as I continue to wash this. I will also link to the image in the video description because that is from Silhouette. Okay, I think that's everything. This was a good short tutorial on how to transfer an image to a Tumblr, and I'm really excited with how it turned out. So let me know what else you wanna see. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.